if you're a work from home dog parent like I am, there are a couple of things that you can do to set yourself and your dog up for success during your work day to make sure they're getting all the love and attention that they need, but to make sure that you're also getting your work done and they are not interfering with any company things that you have to do if you have to be on live streams, your video calls, your phone calls. So the first thing that we do is early morning playtime. This is essential to our success with two puppies in this house. I have to make sure my girls are getting their energy up first thing in the morning. So we build a routine that my girls can understand and recognize and are familiar with the time frame of. That's really important. Setting a routine for your workday, even if you work from home, even if you have different types of things that you do, you can create routine for your dogs in terms of when they're eating, when they're playing, when they're going outside, when they're playing inside, when they're playing outside, all of these things, you can develop a general routine so that they understand the flow of the day. You're going to be busy now. You cannot be loud now. You are going to have free time now. When they understand that, that works a lot better for you. So our day starts off by waking up, going out for a quick break, coming inside, eating their breakfast. I then give them some quiet time because we know the dogs are not supposed to rough house for a certain period of time after eating their meal or they could flip their stomach and it's a whole thing. So they get a little bit of quiet time and then we go outside for play time and we play first as a group. So I took all the puppies out, we play for a while and then when Gemma starts to get a little bit tired, I put Gemma inside and I play with Lucy a little bit more. Lucy has a very high amount of energy, way more than the other dogs in the house. And so she gets extra time where I work her really, really hard playing and chasing toys. And recently Gemma has been asking for some individual time as well. So then I put Lucy inside and Gemma comes out and we have a, a lower key play time for her. We still run and chase and play with toys and all the things, but it's not as intense as it is with Lucy. So having that energy out of the way early on, really is instrumental in making sure we've got some quiet downtime where I can be working, I can do live streams, I can do my video recordings, I can do the things that I need to do while they are resting, having quiet playtime, having nap time. And then later in the day, we have more playtime. So my girls have recognized this routine and they understand there's gaps of time in between the intense playtime. So I give them lots of space to do what they need to do and lots of time to rest as well, which is great because they are still puppy puppies and they do need lots of rest in their schedule. Now, another thing that works really well for us is a mobile workstation. This has been so incredibly helpful to me when I started implementing this. I got two tables that are on wheels and they raise and lower so I can have them at standing level or I can have them sitting at level. And I put all of my technology that I'm going to need throughout the day on these two tables. So I have mounts where I can put my laptop, I can put my extra monitors, I can attach my microphones, my cameras, all those things so that I have a workspace and I have space for the technology all on a rolling table. And this then allows me to move wherever I need to move. So on the days where my girls are doing well, they're being independent, they're having independent playtime, they're having nap time, I can work over in my space where I am right now. If we're having a needy day where they just need mommy time, I can roll my table with all my technology already set up, just click those wheels and roll it over to the couch where I can sit on the couch to do most of my work and my girls can just nap on my lap, which they love to do. I can also move my table if they need more space to play. If my nieces are coming over and I don't want them to touch all of my technology, I can move it if I need to block something off. I have the accessibility to change locations of my technology without having to take down and set things back up and move things around and all the, all the things at very most, all I have to do is unplug my computer or my technology and move it to the other side of wherever I need to be. It is very effective for me to be able to move things. And because it raises up and lowers down, I can have it at different levels. So if I need to stand for something or sit for something or, you know, just move things at different levels, I can do that. So I've got a nice little space and because I've got two of them and I'm, as you can see, working in a corner right now, this allows me to kind of block in just my own workspace. And so the puppies can't get too into my space while I am live streaming or recording. They can't as, as easily pop up to get in the way of whatever we're doing or end up on screen. Now, another thing that you want to make sure that you are doing as you are preparing your dog's for success during your workday, if you are a stay at home parent, is to train your dogs on what to expect. That goes back to routine. They understand what's happening during the day, but they also have experience 
with the things you're going to be doing. So if you are a live streamer, if you are going to be having Zoom meetings with your team, if you're going to be on phone calls, your dogs need to know what to expect because if you're just doing it out of the blue, that's a novel concept for them. That's something that they don't quite understand. And that typically makes most dogs pretty interested in what you're doing, meaning they're going to come and get in your space, knock into your technology, jump up and give you kisses, all those things. So you want to make sure that you train them to understand what this is going to be like. Now we're going to do a full in-depth video on this. So follow along for more if you want details on how you can train them. But the overview or at least some of the highlights of this is to do practice runs. If you're going to be doing live streaming, set up your phone, set up your camera, set up your computer and talk to it. It doesn't have to be an actual live stream. Talk like you would on a live stream so that they understand what it's like, what they're going to experience. If you're going to have Zoom meetings with your team or you're going to be in meetings with your students or your members or your followers, you're going to set up fake conversations with people. And you can do this really easily by doing a FaceTime call with your mom or your sister or your best friend. You can do this by pulling up a YouTube video. Please feel free to use my YouTube videos for this. And you, what you want is to have that back and forth conversation. So pull up one of my videos on this channel or on my social media education channel or my author channel. And all you're going to do is you're going to speak and you're going to play the video, but you're going to have it on mute when you're speaking and then unmute it when the person is speaking back to you. So it doesn't matter what I'm saying and it doesn't matter what you're saying. The conversation is the point. Now, I do recommend going through a range of voices. So you don't just want it to be just me all the time or they'll be familiar with my voice, but maybe not a man's voice or maybe not somebody else's type of voice. So you want to kind of go through multiple YouTube videos or or have multiple people, your dad, your brother, your cousins, your whoever, hanging out with you as well. So you have male and female, you have lower and um, higher voices so that you've got all of the things, the different accents, whatever you can, whatever you are going to experience or they're going to experience, give them examples of that so that they're familiar with it. Because the first handful of times, they're probably going to come and get in your face. This way you can train them. And then when it comes time to do it for real, it's not going to be as big of a deal for them. So you'll probably have less things to deal with at that point. But there's a lot that goes into that one. And like I said, I have a whole video planned on this one. So follow along because I'm giving tons more tips over in that video that's coming up for you. You want to make sure that you are developing a safe and understood space with your dogs so that they know what to expect, when to expect it, and how to behave during these things during your work day. Even if your work day looks a little bit different, you can develop some consistency in there so they understand the cues, the social expectations of what it's like to have mommy or daddy working from home and actually having to work and not be on on their whims 24 seven. Now there's lots more things that we can be talking about. So if you've got questions, go ahead and drop those down below and follow along for daily videos, helping you navigate the world of being a dog parent from documenting your dog's life to traveling with your dog to being a work from home dog parent. We are here to help you make this the most successful parentship that you can have with your dogs. I know I made up that word, but that's okay. We're dog people and we do that, right? We'll see you in the upcoming episodes.